Hello guys and welcome back to a page in the chapter or welcome if you are new here. My name is Paige and today we are doing something different. So this is a video idea that I came up with where I didn't realise that Goodreads had its own little recommended section based on what you'd shelved and so Goodreads recommends but do I? Where well, I'm going to read some of the books that Goodreads recommends to me and I'm going to see if I enjoy them and I would recommend them to myself or to you guys if you like the same kind of books that I do. So if you like this idea and you like vlog style reading challenges and reading vlogs and all that sort of thing then do please feel free to hit that big red subscribe button down below to stay tuned for future content. I upload videos every single Wednesday and occasionally on a Sunday. You can also feel free to check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Page and Chapter to see what I'm reading and how I'm reviewing it in real time. And so let's just get on into Goodreads Recommends, but do I? So have my trusty laptop here. Let's pick some books to read, shall we? So I'm going to go based on my to read shelf, at least in the beginning. This is a hockey romance by an author that I haven't read before and it is a series so this could be good in terms of finding a new romance author that I like because we're sticking with a trope that I already like. Uh, it's about a hockey player and a flight attendant. Potentially gonna give this one a go. I'm very interested in the Chestnut Springs series but I do have plans for that series so I'm not gonna read it for this video. I've seen a lot on Sarah Kate's series but I really don't know if this will be for me. I feel like that would be quite a dark romance. What's accidentally Amy? So this is meet cute plus grumpy sunshine plus friends to lovers equals accidentally Amy. So I am gonna give this one a go and then let's have a little look in the fantasy. I have always wanted to read the Lux series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Okay yeah so the three books that I will be reading for Goodreads recommends but do I is Obsidian by Jennifer L. Armentrout, Accidentally Amy by Lynn Painter and Mile High by Liz Tomford. I do have high hopes for these books. I have chosen books that I do actually think that I will like because otherwise what would be the point in this video? and we'll see if Goodreads is correct and if you can actually trust the Goodreads recommendations page because it gives you a lot of recommendations for every like genre that you like. And so let's get on in to the video. So let's talk about Mile High. This is a hockey romance following a main character who is the bad boy of this Chicago hockey team and our female protagonist who is the or is one of the flight attendants on this team's private jet and for the first time ever the team have decided that they want to keep the same flight staff for the whole season to just make things simpler and so this is how our characters meet. I did not update you sooner on this book because I did not know how I felt about it. I feeling like this was going to be a two star read. I did not feel any kind of connection to the characters. Our main, ca our main female character Stevie, it kind of felt like her only personality trait was that she is a curvy woman and that every, literally every single character is incredibly rude to her about the fact that she has a curvy figure and it just kind of felt like her only interesting quality was that she had this curvy figure that everybody hated her for and outright hated her for it too like it wasn't subtle it was outright i also just wasn't sure on the pacing of this book because they engaged in a sexual relationship around the 25 percent mark which is normally a lot earlier than i prefer for my for it to happen in my books i feel like the earlier it happens the worse the book is like I like to be forced to wait and I just kind of feel like after that I f it's very difficult to get the pacing correct if you decide to defer from the normal structure of a romance book like that is the normal structure of a romance book for a reason I just really wasn't sure how I was liking this book it was really looking like a two-star read because I just wasn't into it but um actually this book is just really fucking cute I am obsessed with it. I had to physically stop myself reading last night because I was going to finish this book before I had a chance to chat to you about it at all. So it was like midnight and I wanted to stay up which is you know strange for me because I'm just a little old lady most of the time and 
I am now at the 80% mark and I have just been waiting all day for my classes to be over so I could update you, give you my thoughts and then go and finish this book. I think there is a very subtle play on a very common trope in the hockey romance world that really works for this story. So the hero of this story is this kind of bad boy character but he's actually not a bad boy at all and it's a very subtle difference from the bad boy character that actually when you get to know him you realise he's just traumatised and he'll change his ways and be a good guy. No, this is actually just a good guy who has to pretend to be a bad boy for the press and nothing that has really gone on in the press is actually going on in real life and this man is just not in any way shape or form like the bad boy of the team it is just all PR and very subtle difference and I like that and I like the fact that we have a main character who has been through therapy and is very aware of his decisions and he feels like a very very healthy main character despite the fact that he has a lot of like childhood trauma that does influence his relationships you still get that element but you don't get it in a really toxic way because he is handling things in a more emotionally mature way having gone through therapy and still going through therapy so I'm really enjoying that very subtle twist on this like bad boy hockey romance and there is just a really really healthy relationship between these characters that I enjoyed seeing play out on screen and whilst I was worried that they were going that they were sleeping together too early it actually really worked for this story and it happened in a very deliberate way for this specific plot line that the author wanted to take this book in and I feel like whilst I was very iffy on this book at the start, looking back now that I'm in a much later point, all of these decisions were very deliberate for things that happen later on in the book and I enjoy seeing that. I enjoy seeing that this wasn't just an idea that was thrown together that somehow worked, it deliberate and I Honestly, this book is really fucking cute. I am torn between giving it a 4.5 and a 5 stars. That will depend on the last 20% of this book. The fact I'm torn makes me think it's more of a 4.5 star book, but I, I lo I'm loving it. This book is really, really cute and one of the best hockey romance books that I have read. I'm gonna go read the last 20% and then we'll chat about the book as a whole and my final thoughts. Okay. I have finished Mile High. I don't know if this is a 4.5 anymore. I don't know. I'm really conflicted about my review for this. I think it's definitely a 4 star. Just not sure if it's a 4.5 star or not. I felt like this ended up being a really, really sweet story. And the fangirlness that I felt for these characters and the relationship that these two characters had with each other was just a breath of fresh air honestly especially in a hockey romance I just really really enjoyed it and I would 100% read more from this author she does have another book but the other book is basketball and not hockey and so it, yeah I'm not sure whilst I picked this book because I knew I liked hockey romances and I knew it would be a safe bet I really didn't think that this book was gonna work for me I have not had too much luck with some more recent hockey romances that I have read. I feel like I either love them or they are a one or two star read for me. I, just, I haven't had too much luck. So I came into this video really expecting to think that Goodreads was giving me really bad reviews because nothing else on the Goodreads website works very well so I kind of figured their algorithm for recommending books would be a bit dodgy and I have a lot of hockey romances that I have shelved but not necessarily loved so I kind of thought that this one could go either way and I am pleasantly surprised to find that I really really enjoyed this book and in terms of Goodreads recommends but do I, I definitely recommend this book. I think this is one of the better hockey romances out there. I don't think it beats the off-campus series just because I really like the new adultness of the off-campus series and the fact that it is set at a university rather than in the NHL. I just prefer university settings for college, for sports romances than professional leagues but I do think that other than the off-campus series this is the best hockey romance that I've read. I said it like this one is up there it's better than icebreakers and i highly recommend you guys go and read it and so i will catch up with you guys when it is time to talk about the next book for goodreads recommends but do i
So let's talk about Accidentally Amy, which I am about 40% of the way through right now, and I'm a little confused by. So the premise of this book is that we follow our main character, Isabella, and she is in Starbucks and she's late to work and someone has ordered the exact same thing as her and is not going up to the front to collect it. And so they keep calling out this pumpkin spice latte for Amy and Izzy decides to take it and then runs directly into her boss although she doesn't know he's her boss yet and this is the first time that they've met and so then he thinks that her name is Amy which I think could be a good premise and I was kind of intrigued by it except for the fact that it was then resolved immediately like they went to work and he found out that she wasn't called Amy she was called Isabella or Izzy or whatever the hell her name is and now they're just kind of moving on from that the only time the amy thing is really brought up is they pretend like jokingly to have these like alter egos that message outside of work because they don't think they should be messaging outside of work because they work together and things get complicated i just don't really understand why the book is called accidentally amy and the whole marketing and premise of this book is this whole miscommunication where she picks up a drink that isn't hers and then someone it's like a mistaken identity thing but that isn't the case at all. This book is kind of just a very bland romance with no plot to it whatsoever. I think these characters have started acting relationshipy way too soon. We haven't seen them build a relationship or build chemistry. It was just kind of there immediately. And honestly, uh, they're giving me more friends energy than they are couple. I can't say I'm rooting for them to get together in any way. It feels very friends to lovers e, which I'm not enjoying. Um, this is why I don't really like Friends to Lovers because I think it is often very very bland. I also am confused by this concept of they can't date because they work together because she is in HR which he's already said like you don't answer to me your manager and boss is this person and he is literally like the director or like the CEO he's like very very high up. It's This book is really trying to do like a billionaire CEO thing and failing at it miserably but I feel like if he said he was gonna date someone who is not directly answering to him then he could probably swing that because it's his company so I'm a bit confused by it and frankly I'm just not enjoying this book at all I'm hoping I can get it finished today on my commute because I just want this done and dusted I as it stands at the moment this book is just very very bland it's just like watching two friends hang out there's no plot there's no chemistry there's no spice why why has Goodreads done this to me why another day another early morning where I need to just get shit done so I finished What's it called? Being Amy? Accidentally Amy. I finished it. It did not get any better in my opinion. When I left off reading the last time I'd spoken to you I had just reached a kind of turning point in their relationship where they were going to progress from this just friends situation. It didn't, it didn't help. I still just saw them as friends. The smut scenes were half-hearted and not particularly sexy. It spark any emotion and all of the foreplay was fade to black and then the actual act of the sexual interaction was kind of glossed over in very like flowery language. Which fine if you're gonna do that. It just didn't work in this particular case. I was hoping that seeing them in this type of relationship and how that played out would really help me see the spark between these two and unfortunately the way that it was written with all this flowery language and fade to blacks didn't allow for that to happen. It was just a very very nothing book. It was quite a short book to anyway. I got through it very quickly on my kindle and it could have been even shorter if you took out a lot of the nonsense. I also feel like our female main character was quite immature in the way she responded to things. She didn't have any particular interest in hearing our hero out. And there is a little bit of a miscommunication trope in that no one really did anything wrong. It's just a, a misunderstanding about what happened and our heroine's brain getting in the way. And so 
the fact that I dislike friends to lovers and I've never read an example that works for me and I dislike miscommunication tropes just culminated in me giving this book a two star rating. I was not particularly impressed by this book. I can see why Goodreads would recommend this to me because I have shelved contemporary indie romances with this type of cover onto my shelves but I haven't read any of them yet. So this particular pick is obviously based on what's in my want to read shelf and not what I've actually been rating books before. Because if it did know that this was like a friends to lovers, then it would know that I don't like that. And so I feel like this particular aspect could be done better if it worked a bit like Storygraph where books had like tags and then Goodreads knew what the general theme of the books you were reading were and could make recommendations based on that I think would be a particularly good system but in terms of finding books that you could be interested in so far I don't think the recommendations page is that bad a 50 50 chance at this point and the third book which is Obsidian by Jennifer L. Armentrout will decide if you are more likely to find a book you like or more likely to be recommended a bad book by Goodreads, we will see. But so far, do not read Accidentally Amy, it will let you down. <clears throat> I am about 50% into Obsidian by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This book is Twilight. If you like Twilight, you want something exactly the same as Twilight, read this book. It's just exactly the same as Twilight. You have this really moody character that clearly has something going on that keeps hinting that he is not quite normal and a not like other girls character who is acting like an adult even as a teenager and has very absent parents who treat her like an adult even though she's a teenager who is slowly starting to figure out that something weird is going on with these guys and that they really start to bond because she goes out at night and gets herself into some trouble and he comes along and saves her and honestly it's a good vibe but I don't know how to review it because I do not have an emotional connection to this book and so I'm not loving the cringe aspect of it as much but that is because this book isn't aimed at me and I know that if I read this as a young teenager I would have been obsessed with it so I don't know how to review it and I'm not really sure what I'm doing or how I'm going to wrap this up because I can see why Goodreads recommended it to me and I'm not having a bad time but I also can't really review this book with today's standards so I'm not entirely sure what to do. Yeah, as a like another option for Twilight this is fantastic and I really wish that I had known about this or gone and read this book and not been creeped out by the fact that they're aliens as a teenager because um, this book would have really done it for me. I would have been obsessed with it. So ignore the mess behind me. I am packing for New York but um, I thought that I was 50% of the way into Obsidian. I was not. I was 30% of the way into Obsidian. I am now 50% of the way into Obsidian. When I last spoke to you I really wasn't sure what to make of it because I felt like it was aimed at an age category that is not me which remains true and I felt like it was very much a Twilight knockoff which is also kind of true but something <laughs> has occurred. So she has now found out that he is like not human which is not a spoiler because I think everyone in the world knows this is a paranormal romance series but when she finds out that he's not human she's like oh are you a vampire and he comes back with I think you read too much no I'm not a vampire and then she like finds out like what he is and like a bit later in the conversation she's like oh god please don't tell me you sparkle <laughs> and I just I feel like this book knows exactly what it is and it's poking fun at itself a little bit and thus I'm enjoying it a lot more. <laughs> it just took those little details and I was like, this book also knows that it's kind of a Twilight ripoff <laughs> and it's kind of doing it better. <laughs> I also think that our characters have had a lot of time to get to know each other. I can't say it's enemies to lovers, like he hates her yes but you kind of know all along that he doesn't actually hate her and it's just uh I can't have anyone too close to me to protect my secret kind of deal but I feel like the reasons that our characters have ended up talking have been very realistic reasons and I also feel like they are having a lot of time together and I am enjoying seeing the relationship play out in a way that does make sense and something Jennifer L. Armentrout 
does really really well is like adding a little bit of spice to her books while still ma making them young adult books obviously her adult smutty series is adult and smutty but I read the Half-Blood series by her when I was a teenager and to me they were like the spiciest thing ever. I was obsessed with them. I reread them as an adult and I was like all they, all they did was make out. But she manages to write it in a way that feels very very exciting and I feel like this book has those elements too and honestly it's making my inner 14 year old very 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 happy. I am having so much more fun with this book than a grown woman should have with a book about an alien and a human. Why is it so good though? <laughs> I just don't think I'm gonna have any trouble finishing this book. I think I could probably finish it tonight if I really wanted to. I am potentially even tempted to continue on with this series just because I'm having a lot of fun and so whilst I know this book objectively is not a good book. I am struggling with how I'm going to rate it in the end because I'm enjoying it but I also don't think this book is for everyone and something that I should necessarily be recommending. Like it would have a caveat, it would be like I recommend this book as a replacement for Twilight if you are feeling like you want a guilty pleasure teenage paranormal romance. I don't know how to rate something that has a caveat but yeah, I think I'm gonna go finish up or read a lot more of Obsidian because they've, they're starting to bond and I feel like it's just getting good now. Like, the actual romance stuff is gonna happen and I'm excited about it. Are you cute? You're so cute. <laughs> He's so content to just... I am. You're just such a cute little boy. Yes, you are. So I did finish Obsidian in the end. I had a shockingly good time with it. I, it is not normal for me to have enjoyed that book as much as I did. But if you were an Obsidian fan as a child or a teenager, then uh, you should check this book out now because it still holds up. It still gave me that excited feeling and I uh, absolutely adored it. I loved the structure of the book. I loved that it ended in a way that was a good like finish to the book but I am desperate to know more and I kind of want to do a whole video where I read the entirety of the Lux series. So let me know if you would be interested in that because I really really enjoyed the first book. <laughs> I think really I just haven't grown up. Also look at my new nails. They are the perfect New York nails. So yeah I really really enjoyed Lux. It just felt very camp. It felt very early 2000s. It felt very teenage paranormal lit and honestly does that ever go out of style? Like is that ever not a vibe? Sometimes you just need the cringe of an early 2000s romance and to be fair I don't feel like this was that cringe other than the blatant Twilight references which I actually found quite funny and the fact that like they're teenagers but they're also supernatural like other than that element. I wouldn't say there was anything about this book that was object that like really made me cringe like sometimes I read Twilight and the lines are like oof no I didn't really experience any of that in this book so I don't think it was cringe cringe it was just you know I knew that I probably shouldn't be enjoying it as much and thus a little bit of a guilty pleasure read but really enjoyed it I was saying before that I didn't know how I would rate it I do I do know how I will rate it now just because I feel like I can mesh the two together and I do feel like this was a three star book. Like it didn't blow me away the way that I would expect a four or a five star book to be. It didn't elicit any kind of emotion from me the way I would expect a five star to. I had a really good time with it. It was above meh and I've been giving meh books two stars this week. It changes every week really. But meh books have been two this week and it was more than meh but it didn't elicit any particular emotion and it does have caveats and thus I'm going to rate this book three stars. But we'll come and we will chat properly about what this means for Goodreads Recommends but do I in the outro. So this week for this video I read three books, those three books being Mile High, 
accidentally amy and obsidian honestly to answer the question of can you trust the goodreads recommendations page yes you can there are caveats though as with anything in life so i really enjoyed two of these books i gave one of them four stars and one of them three stars but that was an i really enjoyed it as a guilty pleasure read kind of three stars i mean you know you watch the video and so whilst i did really enjoy those i feel like ultimately the goodreads recommendations page is a place to do exactly that just find recommendations if you come across a book when you're not sure if you'll like it you probably won't like i knew that i was taking a bit of a risk with accidentally amy but the point was to see can i trust the recommendations that goodreads is giving me and it's not like with a friend where you can probably trust their recommendation this is more just like if you really do not have any ideas of what books to buy next or what you want to read then this is a really good place to just kind of find those recommendations but not necessarily to 100% like find like every single book on that list is going to be something you give five stars you still have to use that same level of thinking of you know is this book really going to be for me but i definitely will be using this page more and i also i clearly do not pay much attention when i use goodreads because the other day i went on to my 2023 reading challenge and then on the side it says based on your 2023 reads and it has a recommendation section there so i definitely want to see if those are slightly more accurate because they would be more up-to-date recommendations however i do think ultimately goodreads recommendations are just based on what you shelve so i could add something to my 2023 reading challenge that i've given two stars and goodreads will still give me a recommendation based on that because i've read it and shelved it all of these books that are in my to read or in my red shelf it doesn't take into account how you actually rated them which is a flaw of this system however the books that i knew that i would enjoy i enjoyed mile high actually ended up being even better than i could have wished that it would be honestly one of my favorite hockey romances that i've ever read and i've read a lot i did a whole deep dive blog on hockey romances and i have continued to read them ever since because it has become my new favorite like little niche of romance um and mile high was one of the best that i've ever read so go goodreads for that one obsidian was i put off reading obsidian for a really long time because i whilst i knew it was similar to books that i enjoyed as a teenager i didn't think i would enjoy it now and i took a bit of a risk reading it as an adult for this video and again clearly goodreads knows what it is talking about because i really 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 enjoyed this book regardless of the fact that i am an adult and it is not aimed at me and then accidentally amy was just really not for me you know that you know my reasons why i don't really want to dwell on the one book that wasn't great in this video because i enjoyed two others so yeah if you guys enjoyed this video and you would like to see more from me then do please feel free to hit that big red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for future content. I upload every single Wednesday and occasionally on a Sunday. Let me know of any kind of videos like this where I try things or challenge videos or things like that. Anything you would like to see let leave it in the comments section so that I can do it for you. Also feel free to check me out on Instagram and Twitter at Page in Chapter so that you can see all of the New York content that I will be posting, all of the glorious Barnes and Noble book haul that I'm sure will occur and so feel free to follow me on there. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week, you are enjoying everything you are reading and there are no reading slumps in your future and I will see you for my next video. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.